Imagine how great it would be if there were places where cute ones in trouble could go for help. Well, you can find amazing places like that all around the world. Great spots to see abandoned baby kangaroos jumping for joy. Or hurt howler monkeys getting healthy and ready to howl their hearts out. And adorable lion cubs growing up strong and ready to roar. These are the animal sanctuaries of the world. The cute one's best friends. Our adventure begins in the rugged outback of Australia. This adorable baby kangaroo named Titch has lost his mom. Now he's all alone, and although he's still awfully cute, he's also awfully skinny and very frightened. Baby roos are called joeys, and this joey needs some help. Luckily, someone has spotted Titch along the side of the road and called the Kangaroo Sanctuary in Alice Springs. Now the founder of the sanctuary, Chris Brolga Barnes, is heading out to rescue the hungry baby. Brolga looks and looks, but it's tough to spot a little Joey out here. But wait, there he is. Brolga carefully sneaks up on Titch. He doesn't want to spook the poor Joey. He expertly scoops the baby up and they head for safety. At the beautiful sanctuary, this oh so cute one will get all the help he needs. The mission of the sanctuary is to help young kangaroos who have been orphaned or abandoned. Often it happens because of highway accidents in the outback. Joeys like Titch are cute ones because they are lovable young kangaroos who need someone to step in as a mom. And that's exactly what Chris Brolga Barnes does. Titch is very dehydrated and really needs some healthy liquids. When Brolga first tries to give him a baby bottle, he won't take it. He doesn't recognize that strange device as a source of delicious food. Finally, after some persistence and persuasion, he takes the bottle. Titch has the hang of it now. And he drinks enough to survive. After this life-saving meal, Brolga bounces him on his knee. Maybe it's a way to burp him. A group of kangaroos is called a mob. And Brolga cares for a big mob of happy hopping roos at the sanctuary. Kangaroo Sanctuary celebrates the Australian icon, the Red Kangaroo. They rescue, rehabilitate, and then release orphaned baby kangaroos back into the wild. Those who can't be released into the wild are set free into the wilds of the 188-acre sanctuary. Each one of these roos had a sad story like Titch until the kind animal lovers here took them in. Tourists can come visit the kangaroos, but only in the late afternoon. 
kangaroos like to sleep during the day, so the tours only start when the kangaroos are waking from their daytime sleep. They don't want to disturb their naps. After all, they might get hopping mad. Meanwhile, Brolga will carefully play mom to this new baby until the joey is strong enough to join the mom. Kinda looks like he's made a kangaroo pouch. Titch will hang out with Brolga around the house and doing household chores. Sharing a cup of tea. and watching TV. Before long, his legs are sturdy again, and he follows Brolga everywhere. The two are inseparable buddies. Titch even follows him to the bathroom. Finally, Titch regains his strength, and he's ready to join the mob in the outdoor sanctuary. What a face on this cute one. And it's a cute blanket, too. Brolga makes some introductions to the mobsters, and they welcome their new friend immediately. Brolga feeds Titch a little snack to give him the extra energy he'll need to get back hopping again. goes, one happy, healthy, and very lucky cute one. Here in the jungles of Belize, these adorable howler monkeys live a wonderful life. Their name comes from the fact that they, well, howl. They're louder than any other types of monkeys. In fact, they are believed to be the loudest of all land animals. Their howls can be heard 10 miles away. They often call out as the sun comes up and howl again as it's going down. They also howl to warn other monkeys of danger. And their screams probably scare away predators too. Sometimes, the howlers get too close to the villages where the humans and their machines can hurt these cute ones. This poor girl was found near the village with an assortment of injuries. Luckily, she was rescued by the great people of the monkey sanctuary in Sartinea, Belize, called Wild Tracks. Paul Walker and his wife Zoe run the Primate Rehabilitation Center and they make it their mission to help any orphaned or injured monkeys, nurse them back to health, and then hopefully return them back to the wild. 
Without this help, these wounded and abandoned howlers would just not be able to survive. Thank goodness for the walkers and their team. They are now going to care for this monkey and help her to socialize with other howlers. The injured monkey was very young when she arrived at the sanctuary. Paul comforts her and makes her feel right at home. When she starts feeling better, she'll be able to join this super fun looking enclosure. Wild Tracks takes in howler monkeys of all ages. But the ultra cute babies are especially important because usually they were too young to be taken away from their mothers. They need to learn even the most basic things like climbing trees and what food to eat. The monkeys are so cute when they get very attached to the volunteers who have stepped in to become their surrogate mothers. These rescued howler monkeys really have a lot to learn. Even some of the older ones need to be taught what proper food is in the wild. Sometimes the volunteers at the sanctuary demonstrate eating the leaves so that the monkeys learn to recognize it as food. Yummy! The volunteers become best friends to these cute ones. There's plenty of climbing, eating, playing, and just hanging around. Can these monkeys be any cuter? Eventually, the injured monkey and one of her new playmates are ready to be released back into the wild. It's not easy getting these howlers into the cages. They're not acting very cute, but you can't blame them. But they are off on a great adventure for sure. The sanctuary team releases them into their privately owned stretch of jungle near the coast.
The howlers like to live in groups of 10 or 15 monkeys, and they rarely fight with each other, so they'll make plenty of new friends. Here, the howler monkeys should be safe and sound, and ready to live on their own in the wild. They will join lots of other cute ones that Paul and Zoe Walker have nursed back to health in the Wild Track Sanctuary. This is fun. Wow, these are some amazing looking cute ones. They are young lion cubs, the new generation. But the lion population in Africa has been dwindling fast. These lovable babies aren't growing up out in the wild. They are being raised at this lion sanctuary called Lion Encounter here in Zambia's Mosi Altunya National Park. The lion population has dropped over 80% in the past 30 years. This is Africa's first genuine program to ethically reintroduce the babies of captive bred African lions back into the wild. The goal of the sanctuary is to raise prides of lion cubs to make sure their numbers in the wild stay stable. It's hard to believe these adorable cute ones are the kings of the jungle. This wildlife sanctuary raises cubs so they can eventually release them back into the national park. The cubs are kept in a nursery all together so they might bond and eventually become their own pride. They seem to be pretty good at posing for cute pictures too. They learn and build strength by playing and fighting with each other. You start to see that these cute ones will learn to be tough ones before long. The trainers take them outside the nursery for walks so they can explore their surroundings and hone their other survival skills. Climbing is a critical skill they'll need to master. They get up the tree with no problem. It's coming back down, that's the issue. Their claws point the wrong way for going down, so they have to carefully slide so they don't get hurt. That could be fun, or a complete disaster. The cubs have gotten bigger and stronger, so it's time to move them to a new, larger enclosure. This new environment will be scary for them at first. But one of the males, Tunya, a natural born leader is the first to enter the enclosure. He'll eventually become the leader of the pride. He investigates, and once he gives the okay, the rest of the little pride makes their way inside. Once they get past their nerves, they are also curious and begin to explore.
this is a very interesting place. They start to feel right at home. Soon, they're taken on a field trip to the river for the first time. Tonya senses danger, but the other cubs are oblivious. There's a crocodile in the water. but one of the cubs has gone to drink anyway. Luckily, she spots the croc in the nick of time. That meeting would definitely have spoiled her day. Fortunately, everyone is able to head home safely. This is an important lesson for young lions to learn. Be aware of their surroundings at all times. And look out for each other to keep the pride safe and together. The cubs are well on their way to growing up and becoming a pride of their own. Eventually, they'll leave the lion encounter and be released into the wildlife reserve. They'll live on protected lands, so they won't be in as much danger from humans. these cute ones will be able to raise more cute cubs of their own in the wild. Thanks to the great work on the Lion Encounter Sanctuary. These real-life teddy bears are just about the cuddliest, snuggliest creatures on the planet. But they're in danger of disappearing forever. And it's up to us to make sure they not only survive, but thrive. Giant pandas. Everyone's heart just melts when they look into those button eyes. And it's a race against time to make sure the next generation of these adorable dolls has a chance to grow up and flourish and have a healthy life. Let's spend some time watching these amazing animals. From big guys munching bamboo, playing and having fun, to the most adorable newborn. They're all lovable, cute ones. Giant pandas once roamed vast areas of Asia, ranging from China to Vietnam. But people and pandas don't really mix, and when cities grow, there's lots of room for you and me, but not for pandas. Today, more than half of the panda's natural habitat has been destroyed. 
and life for these incredibly cute creatures is very, very difficult. Today, less than 2,000 giant pandas survive in the wild, and these irresistible cute ones are struggling to avoid extinction. All the remaining wild giant pandas live in the high mountains of China. This is where cool, wet bamboo forests make the perfect home sweet home for the pandas, and where they can live in peace and harmony with nature. In China, these beautiful animals are considered a national treasure, and it's easy to see why. So the Chinese are spearheading a worldwide effort to save the pandas. Besides protecting the wild cute ones, there are over 250 precious pandas living in zoos and research institutes all over the world. There might even be one near where you live. These are where lots and lots of scientists and animal lovers are trying to figure out how to keep the pandas happy and healthy so they can raise a family and maybe even go back out into the wild. So many people love pandas and want them to survive. In the very heart of panda country, there is one extra special place for our panda friends. It's called the Chengdu Research Base of Giant Panda Breeding. People come from all over the world to see the important work that's being done here just for the pandas. The goal here is to build up the population of giant pandas because we all have more than enough love to go around for these real life toy animals. The hope is that the scientists can help bring new panda babies into the world and then teach them how to survive in the wild all on their own. That's a big goal. So many tourists visit the Chengdu research base because they just can't get enough of these roly-poly furballs. They treat the giant pandas like real celebrities, taking lots of photos and videos of these fabulous bears. And lots of the time, patient spectators are rewarded with the panda's hilarious antics. Without a doubt, the panda's favorite activity is eating. In fact, when they're awake, they're almost always chewing on something. Could you do that? Technically, these furry love bugs are meat eaters, and a delicious snack to them might be a mouse or a fish or a bird. But they're just as happy munching away on bamboo. That's their favorite food. And here's something I bet you didn't know. Unlike all the other bears in the world who have clumsy paws, Pandas have paws and a thumb, sort of like your thumb. That means these clever bears have six fingers on each paw. And it's not just for showing. That thumb helps them hold their bamboo and strip off the parts they don't like to eat. Giant pandas eat bamboo 12 hours a day. That adds up to a daily diet of over 30 pounds of bamboo. Their adorable mouths are always going chew and chew and chew. I bet this guy's nickname is Chewy. Now take a really good look at what they're eating. It's basically wood. In order to eat such tough stuff, these cute ones have a superhero stomach. They might look a little on the tubby side, but that tummy is pure muscle. Also, how do they keep from getting splinters inside their bodies? Well, the answer is a little gross. Their throats and stomachs are covered with snot that prevents them from being punctured by splinters. And with all that fiber in their diet, they pay a price. Giant pandas make giant poops. In fact, these cutie pies go about 40 times a day and make over 60 pounds of panda poo. After a hearty meal and a giant poop, there's nothing better than nap time. Pandas don't have a regular bedtime. They just snooze whenever they feel like it and they don't care much about what position they sleep in. They can snooze on their sides, backs, or bellies. Sometimes they're curled up in a ball, other times completely sprawled out. Then it's time for more bamboo and more photo ops with their biggest fans. Just look at these amazing, huggable bears. They're so silly sometimes. No wonder everyone loves pandas. 
In the wild, the thick fur that makes them look so cute and cuddly to us is actually really helping them keep warm. Adult pandas don't like a big party. They like to do things on their own without a lot of buddies around. And most of the time, they're pretty quiet. That is, until they want to get someone's attention. Then these cute ones can growl, huff, and even squeak. But let's talk about those adorable eyes. No one knows for sure why pandas have those black button eyes, but a lot of scientists think maybe it helps camouflage them in the forest and in the snow. Or that their black markings are there to frighten away predators. Scary panda? No way. That guy's too cute for words. Now don't think it's all fun and games with these gentle giants. If they feel threatened, they can be extremely dangerous. Pandas can use their immense strength, powerful jaws, and sharp teeth to make sure danger stays away. But back at the Chengdu research base, giant pandas are living in the lap of luxury. The world loves pandas so much that these cute ones are treated like little princes and princesses. They even have their own special play area. The special panda keepers who work here have a whole routine for keeping the pandas physically fit. They look like they could use a little bit of a workout. Yes, they're getting some scrumptious apples for a snack, but they have to work for it. Reaching up to get the apples is good exercise for these tubby ones. And if it's an especially tasty morsel, you might have a little wrestling match with your buddy. And then it's right back to lounging around with your snack. Sometimes the keeper makes it a little harder for the playful pandas to get their snacks. And that's when you might get to see a panda doing a little bit of a dance. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the panda polka. This may look like all fun and games, but keeping plump pandas in shape is serious business. It's important that they get really healthy food, lots of romping and rollicking, and fresh air and sunshine. When the tourists come to visit, it seems like the cute pandas are hamming it up a little bit extra. They like to show off how adorable they are. The reason why everyone at the research center treats the pandas like royalty is really quite simple. They want the pandas to have the strength and cleverness they will need to start a family and then live out in the wild. And they don't want them to worry for one minute about being taken care of. Why after every day's work and play, the panda nannies carry the young ones in their arms. Back to their accommodations for the night. Anybody know a good lullaby for this cute one? This is the life of the pandas at the research center. Pretty nice, don't you agree? They're sort of like kids at school, 
climbing around at the playground and growing up big and strong. These are cubs that were born last year here at the research center. Can you believe how wonderful and clever this fellow is right here? He's figured out how to get himself out of a pretty tight spot. Watch that last step. It's a doozy. And after a spill like that, what could be better than bath time? Although it's a little hard to tell where bath time ends and playtime starts. Making the research facility family friendly for cubs like this one has been a labor of love. 50 years ago, it was thought that it would be impossible to breed pandas in captivity. But through careful research, over 200 have now been born in zoos and research centers. And more than half of them were born right here at Chengdu. More than 130 of these cubs have been born at Chengdu. Zoos around the world are helping in the conservation effort. China has loaned pandas to these facilities to work on breeding their own cubs. Milan was born at Zoo Atlanta in the United States. Now she's almost four years old and ready to head to her homeland. Hopefully to have her own cubs and help save all the pandas. Milan's arrival in China creates pandemonium. Everyone goes crazy because they love pandas so much. The cuddly celebrity is treated like she's a rock star. What a welcome she's getting at her new home at Chengdu. When she first gets to the research base, she needs to stay inside in a small area. It's just for a little while until scientists are sure she didn't bring a cold or flu with her that might get her new brothers and sisters sick too. At first, she's a little homesick, but before long, she's kicking back, munching on some really choice Chinese bamboo. And exploring all the joys of rolling around. And of course, practicing her cute routine. Over in the Panda Meadow, any one of these young ladies at Chengdu could be getting ready to have a cub or two. But unlike humans, it's almost impossible to tell when a panda is about to become a mommy. Everyone is just so wonderfully plump and round all the time. So all the girls at the research base are given extra portions of food just in case they're eating for two. And no one here is complaining about that. On this particular day, everyone is very, very excited. The reason why Lily is staying inside so still and quiet is because she is about to become a mommy. With hardly a grunt or a squeak, Lily gives birth to not one, but two cubs. It's twins. Panda love times two. And these are definitely amazing cute ones. Pink, blind, and almost hairless, panda infants weigh just three to five ounces and have been compared in size to a stick of butter. While Lily takes care of one of the twins herself, the other twin goes to a special panda nursery where a warm incubator keeps her cozy. What a very teeny, tiny, cute one. All the newborn cubs spend some time in the incubators so their vital signs and food intake can be monitored. The temperature is adjusted to match the warmth of their mom's body. 
The panda cubs are all cared for by the researchers to make sure they are healthy and getting whatever care they need. Mom gets a lot of attention and pampering too. Occasionally, the researchers switch the two twins. That way, they both can get the natural care they need from their mom. Seeing Mama Bear cuddling her baby is so adorable and demonstrates how miraculous Mother Nature can be. After a couple of weeks, the cubs start to look a bit more like pandas. Can you believe how absolutely precious they are? So little, but already with their signature black button eyes and teeny black ears. If any of the babies at the center start looking weak, the researchers step in and quickly put them in the incubator to be sure they grow healthy and strong. Most of the time, a mama panda will have one or sometimes two cubs. But every once in a while, the researchers get a panda surprise and there can be three, four or even five cuddly panda babies. Shh, try not to wake up the sleeping cute ones. They need their beauty rest. So adorable. The baby panda twins in this litter spend their first few months in the gentle loving care of their panda mom and a whole legion of adopted human moms who take care of the cute ones every need. these people moms say it's okay for the pandas to venture outside, it's time to get out in the sunshine for the very first time. Today is the big day. The baby pandas are carried outside one by one. Can you believe this adorable panda parade? They aren't allowed to roam free just yet. First, they need to get used to fresh air and warm sun and also that new baby brother they haven't met yet. Soon, they're able to run and play with each other and explore their new environment. Little by little, the scientists get the panda cubs used to their new surroundings. Everything is so interesting when you're only a few months old. The babies are so cute and curious. And this fellow seems like he's already learning how to pose for photos.
It almost looks like he's a little jealous that his twin sister is getting all the snuggles right now. Every giant panda cub that these scientists can raise to be big and strong animals is a win for pandas and people all over the world. Step by step, panda populations are slowly but surely growing. And soon, they'll be able to make the transition to life in the wild. Wild and free. Within a year, the baby pandas tip the scales at around 100 pounds. Fully mature giant pandas can be up to six feet tall and weigh 350 pounds. At 18 months, the cubs are weaned and able to leave their moms. By the time the females are four to five years old and the males are six to seven years old, the pandas are considered to be grown-ups and ready to think about starting a family of their own. These cubs may become the first generation of pandas to be born in captivity and then return to the wilds of the bamboo forests of the Chinese mountains. Hopefully, they'll make friends in the forest with their wild cousins. And pandas can once again happily roam throughout Asia. enjoying their unrivaled status as one of the world's most adorable cute ones.